Let's jump to the war here, and today we're doing another top 5 Total War video. It's been quite some time since we've done one of these, and uh, this time we'll be going in for a top 5 most difficult star positions on Total War Warhammer 2. Now, this is subject to change based on new DLC and new patches, but these are currently the most difficult positions to start off with on Mortal Empires based around Legendary difficulty. So with that being said, let's jump in now to number 5. Taking the number 5 spot goes to Arkhan the Black, primarily because he does not really have the tools that he needs to deal with the initial situation. So his initial enemy is, are the Knights of the Flame, and you are simply not able to capture that settlement within the first few turns. They start off with an army with 9 units in it, and the garrison has 10 troops. And even though it's mostly just peasants, you don't exactly start off with a lot of good troops yourself. You only have one really good unit, the Tomb Scorpion, and that's just not really enough to account for the difference in number of units. The next thing that can go wrong is that you're going to have a revolt, and if you're not sitting here waiting for it, ready to deal with it right away, that revolt can build up very quickly and possibly even capture Wizard Kali's Palace. Now, you need to hold on to this settlement at all costs. It's the most important thing in this campaign, at least at the start. The next thing that can go wrong is the Greybeard's Prospectors. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes they declare war on you within the first 15 turns. And if they do that, it's very difficult for one of your armies to match one of theirs, simply because your initial armies just don't have much armor piercing. You cannot rely on your Tomb Scorpion to take out an entire army by itself. Now the reason why the first 15 turns are crucial is because that's how long it takes before you get your second army. Once you've got a second army, you're able to pull certain tricks such as leaving one army in ambush stance and the other army as bait. You're able to simply use the other army even if it's a skeleton spam to just tie down the enemy forces while you just have some other unit beat it into submission. Something like that. Another thing that'll come in handy for you is if you don't spend any money at all and wait until you've got a full stack, you can get yourself a Casket of Souls by spending your entire initial treasury, which is totally worth it because this unit here can kill at least two to three hundred dwarfs or bretonians in every single battle and there's no way you're going to win any battles if you don't actually have some damage dealing units and these guys here that you start off with they just don't deal that much damage and that's primarily why arkans get in the number five spot taking the number four spot goes to belagar iron hammer his campaign is centered around getting back to Karak Eight Peaks. Now, it is possible for you to just pack up and leave straight away and go there and actually succeed in capturing it, but it can be quite challenging, and so only some of the most experienced players would be able to do that with relative ease. The other option is to basically just expand in that direction, which means holding on to Karak Izor, which is a good settlement, difficult to defend due to the layout, and just hold your position here as best you can. Now, the problem with this province is that it's very difficult to defend, and you can barely barely afford one full stack. Paying 150% upkeep and then an additional 10% on legendary difficulty, you're just not going to be able to afford many troops. It is possible and not too difficult for you to be able to take out these guys here very easily, but the problem is, just after you, you've, you've secured the province, you'll probably have to deal with uh, Crooked Moon and various other enemies. There are a lot of greenskins that will come after you very early on, including Beastmen, uh, Clan Scryer, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and you don't get a lot of time to build the walls here. Once you do have the walls built here, then you're pretty much okay. Highly recommended that you build the economy building here as quickly as possible. Build the units that you need from here and then demolish it so that you can then build walls because Karak Yuzor is probably going to come under siege quite a few times in your campaign. The Ancestor Heroes also make it a little bit easier for you because they don't have any upkeep cost and they're immortal right away so if you end up losing one of them in a battle it's not that big of a deal. But the primary problem here is just lack of resources, very expensive army and just tons and tons of enemies that are very strong especially with the greenskin update and that's why they're getting the number four position. Taking the number three spot goes to Marathi. Now, she's in a very different position compared to the previous two in that she does actually have the tools that she needs to dominate her enemies in battle at the beginning of the campaign. Tier 1 Dark Elf units, such as Bleak Swords and Dark Shards, are actually quite viable even into the late campaign. And being able to recruit them right off the bat, that's pretty good. So why is it that Marathi's campaign is particularly difficult? I mean, she starts off as one of the... She's one of the strongest legendary lords in the game when you take into consideration her magic. She's got one of the best starting provinces in the game. Why is it so difficult? Well, it's because nobody likes Marathi, basically. 
the starting enemy that you need to deal with, they kind of have a, a stronger army than what you do at the start. And because they're able to recruit faster than you, if you don't take them out quickly before they start recruiting, they'll out recruit you and it'll just get more and more difficult the longer you leave it. So you kind of need to force march down here, allow them to attack you right at the first turn where you can beat them and then continue to just pound them into oblivion. Marathi's campaign requires you to be extremely aggressive, which is also a bit of a drawback because as you're being super aggressive, you have to essentially conquer your enemies because people are just going to keep declaring war on you. Um, Nagarith is going to declare war on you super early. The other High Elves will declare war on you super early. Same thing with uh, Hexawadl. And it takes Marathi time to properly consolidate a province because she requires Chaos Corruption. Now, in your starting province, Chaos Corruption starts at 100% and starts to decay. So you're definitely going to have a revolt. So what ends up happening with Marathi is that you're just frantically just running around putting out fires everywhere. Anywhere that she's in, a, in the local vicinity of, she can put the fire out. But she's got a fairly large area to cover and just doesn't quite have all of the resources needed to deal with everything all at once, making the entirety of the problem much more difficult. So it's no one thing that causes Marathi to have a difficult campaign, it's the compounding of tons of enemies, tons of problems, and expansion difficulties, uh, difficulties that makes her campaign particularly challenging. And that's why she's getting a number three spot. Taking the number two spot goes to Balthazar Gelt. Now the funny thing with him is that the first 10 turns are actually pretty breezy. It's not a difficult campaign at that stage. It's only what comes after then does things get difficult. So you start off at war with the Black Venom and the Skull Takers. Now the Skull Takers are quite funny because they'll attack Fort Sol on turn 1 and you can actually auto resolve and get rid of them pretty reliably. I've done it about a dozen times and I've never seen it fail. As for these guys here, some players can get into a, a trap having defeated these guys at the start, they'll often try to secure their province and take Steingart, but it's a bit of a trap because what ends up happening is that they'll recruit a new army here, and by the time you go from Steingart to Karakirin, it's usually a full stack. However, there's another solution. Instead of going to Steingart, the best solution is to actually go straight to Karakirin and besiege it before they recruit another army. You instead recruit a couple of troops at Fieldorf to come and give you some backup, and then it's quite easy to take the settlement by turn 3 or 4. Very easy to do, and then you can take Steingart easily because it's not a walled settlement. So securing your province and capturing Karakirin, not a problem. There'll be a couple of revolts there, but that's good for leveling up your characters. Now, at this stage of the campaign, that's where the, the difficulty starts to come in, because this is when you'll start to notice that Imperial Authority starts to absolutely tank. And that's because one or more elect accounts gets wiped out. I've seen it possible for three elect accounts to be wiped out by like turn 15. It's possible for Manfred to roll right over Stirland, right over Talabakland, Bartles. and uh, Vlad usually rolls right over Avaland. These guys here seem to be quite passive and the vampire count's aggression has been dialed up to 100. Now the Individually, the vampire counts aren't that big of a deal, but they'll usually sign an alliance treaty with each other fairly early on. So what ends up happening is if you go to war with one, you have to go to war with both of them. Even if you join the war sort of bypass the alliance, the other will usually drag uh, the other one back in. So you pretty much have to fight both of them. And they have a lot of armies because like they got their cheats dialed up. Now, another thing is that because your Imperial Authority drops down, there's quite a few elect accounts that don't really like you that much to begin with, such as Wissenland. So what could end up happening is that while you're in the middle of a life or death situation trying to get back Averheim, Wissenland will declare war on you with artillery and try to take Fieldorf, which is not the best settlement. You don't start off with with that many build slots, and you kind of need the barracks to recruit some crossbows. Um, and, you know, this makes a little bit of money, but not enough to field two full stacks. So what ends up happening is that you get completely compounded by problems, even more so than Marathi. I've gone through this campaign once before, and it's extremely difficult. It was a lot easier in earlier patches, but right now it's one of the most difficult campaigns in Warhammer 2. Now let's move on to the number one, the most difficult campaign currently in Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires. Taking the number one spot for the most difficult start position in Total War Warhammer 2 goes to Throg, because it's really difficult to start a campaign if you have no interest in playing it in the first place. Don't forget to leave a sub, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Now in all seriousness, 
Imric is the one that gets the number one spot. The Knights of Kalidor has the most difficult start position in Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires. Now, they have a very powerful faction, but the early game can be mired by simply just a extremely powerful enemy. It comes into Clan Eshin. Clan Eshin gets their shit together so fast, they will usually declare war on you by around turn 12. Now, even though one of your armies can easily beat one of theirs, the problem is, is they outnumber you and they can ambush you and just grind you down. So any of your undefended settlements, they'll send an army and just recapture it. Um, if you're caught out in the open, they'll just ambush you. And trying to take this province here away from them is a super grind. And while you're fighting here, they could send two or three armies over here to capture your home province as well. Even though you've got some decent defenses here, like I said, they can just grind you down. And the longer you're spending fighting Clan Eshin, the worse it will get. Because Hag Grief will probably take... Uh, take this opportunity to attack you as well since you're in a weakened position and Grimgor usually comes around through here and uh, sometimes declares war on you and then there's also Clan Rictus Ness over here which sometimes get called into the war uh, against you by Clan Eshin. Now there is one saving grace in this campaign which is if things get too difficult you can go home to Ulthwine if you confederate Kalidor. However in order to do that you need to capture six settlements by a certain amount of time. Now there's no definite amount of time that you need to do this. It basically you need to do it before Kalidor dies which is very early. Kalidor will be destroyed by one of three factors. By Noctilus, by Etain, or by the Cult of Pleasure, and you don't have long to do that. And if you choose to confederate and go back home, the other elves are usually not particularly happy with you, and they might just declare war on you as soon as you go back home as well. So there's a lot of challenging things to do with this campaign. It seems to me like this is the sort of campaign that could really use some sort of guide out there, at least for like the first, I don't know, say 15, 20, 25 turns. If only there was a guide out there to really help players get a grasp of what the best decisions are for this because there's a lot that you could potentially do um as of now i don't believe there is such a guide but who knows in the future Anyway, guys, uh, that is the uh, the top five list. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, whether you agreed or disagreed, and if you thought there were more difficult campaigns that belong to be on this list that I left out. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.